It's Monday. Yeah, sometimes you got to hit the buttons in the right order. Um, for Enterprise Dish thing behind you. God damn it! It is Monday. <laughs> Uh, oh well. You know, did that one work? There you go. Where's my mouse? There's my mouse. We can do an enterprise dish if you want. Yeah, we could. All right, there we go. We're just gonna. I'm not even ending that now. We're just gonna roll with that. We're back, um, Paul. I thought about you a lot this weekend because I'm gonna solve all your quandaries in one. Wow. Week. Well, all right. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna solve them. But I'm going to reveal your frustration here. Okay. Do the four letters S, B, M, M make any sense to you? No. Skill-based matchmaking. Yes. Okay. This, oh. is, this is why you hate every new Call of Duty game. And this is why you like enough, the old ones. I don't have enough skill. No, 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 no. <laughs> it's It's... So this is a lot of frustration on all of the all of the newer games. So what happens is, is based on your skill, they put you into a lobby of similarly skilled people. It sounds great, um, mm-hmm. except for yeah. when you're used to not having that, where it was just truly random, and that's when you do pretty well. Much like the older games, because they have to turn that off because the lobby pool isn't large enough to have s skill based matchmaking. Ooh, so when you play older Call of Duty games, it's truly random. It's just whatever twenty five people in a room. When you jump into Black Ops or Call of Duty, whatever, the, the newer one, you yeah, are yeah, yeah. subjected to that algorithm, which is putting you into a more competitive room, which is why you don't like the game. You're welcome. Wow. I mean, I, I to be clear, my goal was never to, you know, be the, like the, the one adult in a game of children playing basketball. Right, right. No, no, no. Ball, I, but, you know, right. Um, that's interesting. So you're probably right. Um, I, uh, just as uh, tangentially attached to this, I would say, uh, you know, my kids came home over the weekend and... Mm-hmm. Mark comes into my office and he's checking out the Xboxes and stuff. And he says, you know, how's, how's the new Call of Duty? Mm-hmm. And so I said, actually, you know, I said, <laughs> I kind of explained to him the problem that we've been discussing. And he said, um, he goes, do you have crossplay enabled? Oh, yeah, that would turn like, that off too. Yeah, probably. I haven't changed anything. And he says, and I said, you know, it's interesting. Now, I suspect crossplay on, on this game is just PS and Xbox, right? It's nope. got to be. Nope. But that's the thing. I said, you know what? I, and I just wrote about this. So if you're a premium subscriber, the past two Mondays, I wrote about video games over time. And like one of one of the hardest transitions I've ever made was from uh, when I when PC gaming was still new. So this is like the early to mid 90s or whatever. You played video games with a keyboard. Mm-hmm. That was it. So games like Doom, you would just, you know, you were yeah. if you wanted to, you know, look left, you had to move left. Like that's how it worked. It was it was just keyboard. Use the arrow keys. That was it. Over time, they added uh, this free look capability with the mouse. And the mouse, you could look around. Well, you, you could be moving forward, but looking up to the left or something. You know, mm-hmm. it was 3D. Mouse, very fast. Very fast. In fact, over time, they developed mice with really fast response rates. You know, I don't know exactly how that works. But um, these guys were unstoppable. And so I was playing like games like Quake in the beginning with a keyboard they were playing Quake with a keyboard and a mouse. They could see in three dimensions, and yep. they were lightning fast. That's exactly what this feels like, dude. And so I said, you know, it's weird. I I, I get shot sometimes in this game. I never even see the person. I, I don't understand, like, I understand if two people walk into a hallway and they both raise their gun and shoot, you know, sometimes one will be faster than the other. Sometimes it has to do with who's hosting the server or what the latency or the mm-hmm. respective pings are or whatever. There's all these factors that go into it but and 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 look i'm over 50 years old i'm not as i guess i'm not as fast response time as i used to be but um i still feel like i can really compete at a high level at this kind of thing and there were times i just walk around the corner but i'm just dead and i said no it's weird it does feel like that mouse keyboard thing so i turned off crossplay and i have to say um you know it's not 100 percent solved but Mm -hmm. i it's gotten better i still have games where i'm like geez it's like four and 17 but i've had games where i'm like 27 and three or you know like really high score it's like so i'm trying i'm like <laughs> it's like i'm really trying but every day that i play this game i i not maybe not every day but i i end up going back to black ops 4 for just a little while just to kind of yep. remind myself like i can dominate in this thing you know so there's no way to turn off skill based matchmaking, right is that this no nope. okay. that's the bane of many people's problems with these things so would it be ironic turn- if like a year or two from now <clears throat> 
I could pick up Modern Warfare again, the new one. And because fewer people are playing it, it's possible. maybe it will be playable. Very possible. Hmm. Yep. The other it's fun thing that happened happened with gaming related this weekend. So I was playing Warzone with my friends and I died and I was waiting to be called back in. This is like nine o'clock at night and my wife texted me if I could pull my daughter's like uniforms out of the washing machine and hang them up. Just, you know, whatever. And so I'm doing that while I'm playing Warzone. You'll see where this is going. And so I put the controller down on the washing machine and I get the oh, stuff dude, out like, and I'm hanging dude, dude, dude. it up and I accidentally knocked it off. Mm -hmm. This is the Elite Series 2. Yeah. Those little components went flying. Oh, yeah, I know. In, it's like a Lego. It, yeah. Just, yeah, I've done this. Like, it took me, I eventually did find all of them, but I could not find one of the thumbsticks. It took like four hours. Like, I thought it was like sitting next to my Vista Ultimate Extras, just somewhere out in the ether. Just nobody knows where it is. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah they, they, it needs to like go down and then screw. Not just, because right now it's just a pure yeah. friction, like magnetic fit. And so it, it would be like if you built uh, it's like Legos, like I said, you know, you build this complex thing mm -hmm. and then you just drop it from a height of three feet and the Legos just go in like, every direction. Yep. Like it's, it is unbelievable. Yeah. So that is like, the, and you would, I really like the controller. Like I still recommend it to anybody. Just don't drop it. Yeah. Uh, but you just, would think that like they would include, like when they were testing all this, they would have thought about people raging out, like on a controller and just throwing this thing. Uh, yep. Clearly they yeah. never did. Anyone who's serious enough to buy, spend that much money, 150 bucks on a controller. Mm-hmm. Um, and I still destroyed it. Like every controller I go through, I end up some button stops working properly. I, I, do, I do the thing where like a right bumper or something will get stuck in. Yep. And then I have to use like a screwdriver or something to wedge it out. And then it, it's fine, you know. But I'm so abusive to controllers. Like um, part of it is just I'm an ape, I guess. I don't know. But part of it is clumsiness. I don't know. Can't Clumsy confirm. ape. Like, <laughs> I don't know. Yep. Just, it's like the Samsonite commercial with the gorillas jumping up and down on the luggage. You know, that's me with a controller. <laughs> but we need you to come up to Seattle to uh, yes, pre-review yes. a product. Can you just play with this controller for Can an you hour? just use this normally? <laughs> exactly. There's just people that in the background furiously take, he did yeah. what with that? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you, you, you dropped your thing. I mean, a yeah. washing machine is a pretty good height. You know, my desk is probably lower than a washing machine, I guess. But I've dropped it. I've had the thing like, you know, you, you finish a game and you run in the other room to get a drink mm -hmm. and then they do the uh, replay at the end of the game and like you are the guy they're highlighting. So the controller is like vibrating and it's like and it goes off yep. the table and smashes off the ground. It's like, what the, why, why is it like this? Hmm. Okay. Here's another very random thought. Not so very random. So last week, what was it? Win UI 3.0 got to preview 3. Mm -hmm. What do you, what do you want to bet that the Sun Valley or whatever Windows 10 sort of UI update is realistically just Win UI 3.0 being integrated into Windows? Um, I mean, I, the timing is too convenient that we're hearing of a UI well, update to Windows, and this Win UI 3.0 is just smashing down the highway. So, I, I mean, the only thing about that is like the the point of win ui is literally to separate the ui from windows mm -hmm. um so before win ui well before win ui 3 certainly before win ui whatever you know uwp like every version of uwp was tied to a version of windows 10 so if right. they introduced a new feature you had to be on that version of windows 10 or newer to access it um and so win ui is an attempt to get rid of that, you know, kind of like getting edge out of the mm -hmm. browser, same thing. Like they couldn't update edge unless they updated the UI, uh, the, uh, operating system. So, but I mean, yeah, I, I suppose if there is a new, uh, if there is a new UI coming in windows, hmm, yeah, I mean, that's, I guess if you put it into when you I mean, I guess that would allow people to write applications that would use that stuff, but it would work on older supported versions of windows 10 too. Maybe. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Mm. I don't know. I was just thinking about that, too. I was like, hey, what are the odds? You know, tied to that is, remember this Project Maui thing that was supposed to come out next year? Yeah, I'd um, really like to be a Maui. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, we're coming right up on Hawaii, you know, normal mm -hmm. Qualcomm, Hawaii. Qualcomm um, thing, yep. Uh, that Maui thing is not happening until 2022 now. And my understanding of Maui, other than being like the next version of Xamarin, is also a, a place or the place where Microsoft will bring its, whatever this new UX is, 
multi-platform, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, like this whole thing, I just feel like this stuff's going to, I think this, all this stuff's going to take way longer than people think it is. Yeah, that's pretty much how it usually shakes out, right? And it's funny when you say multi-platform, I was trying to think like what, what multi platforms well it's like, well, no i know it i know and, what you mean but. and mac actually right and i i don't think web is explicitly part of it because they have separate stuff for the web but of course there's no reason why i couldn't work on the web i mean I get, the idea is just to mm -hmm. i don't know you have like um like the acrylic stuff or whatever yeah. the reveal highlight or whatever you know you want to formally make these things available to microsoft apps wherever they are and to third-party apps if you're a microsoft developer so gives it a kind of a consistent look and feel i don't know does any of this matter anymore? I have no idea. I don't think. I don't know. I mean, it'd be it'd be nice. Nice. It'd be nice if they could just get it done. Hey. You know, that'd be nice. Just finish it. I don't know. Ship it.